What's up, y'all? I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This is your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. Before we get going on today's video, y'all hit that like, subscribe to the channel, share the video, turn on your notification bell, and if you want me on the panel, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email, bro. Now, let's get into the video, but before we do, y'all put that seatbelt on when you hop in the car. That's hitting the like and subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. But let's get it popping, bro. Josh Warrington versus Mauricio Laura. Josh Warrington was on his way to getting knocked smooth the hell out, bro. Let's recap the whole card, though. But before I get into that live show this upcoming Wednesday, we do our live show every Wednesday night, 7.30 Central Time, 5.30 on the West Coast, 8.30 on the East Coast. And make sure you pay attention to the community page. We did a quick little pop-up live stream yesterday. It was very fun um, to do some live commentary and some live analysis of the fights. Um, and we'll do that when we can, bro, when we have time. So you got to pay attention to the community page because I got a busy schedule in real life, not just on YouTube. And if I get some extra time, if I don't have nothing playing with the fam, then I might just pop on live to do a live commentary or a live analysis of a fight, bro. You never know. You know, so be sure to tune into the community page because I try to announce it as I do it. But yesterday we did that. It was very fun. Y'all go check out that live stream if you, if you have time. But um, live shows on Wednesdays at 730. But let's get into this, the, the overall recap. So luckily, um, you know, well, not luckily. I just want to say my sports book is acting in good faith with your boy. They still got my parlay going. I thought it was going to be messed up with the result of the Josh Warrington and um, Mauricio Laura, but they did the right thing. They threw out that fight for your boy, so we still got our parlay going. As long as we get all our fights right today, your boy still get to come up on some cheddar. So I'm happy about that and looking forward to tonight's fight. But let's talk about where we were right and where we were wrong yesterday on our picks. So we went 2-1, and one, and then obviously we always throw out our draws on this channel. So we got two fights right yesterday, one fight wrong. Um, and so now our overall record is 94 wins and 19 losses on our predictions. Now, the first one that we got wrong, man, shout out to Maxi Hughes, man. He beat Giovanni Strafon very conventionally. I'm talking 11 rounds to one. Maybe 10 rounds to two if you try and be generous, but I had it like 11 rounds to one. The only swing round to me was the first round. You know what I'm saying? But then Maxi Hughes beat the shit out of Giovanni Strafon the entire um, the entire rest of the way. And what I thought would happen, you could see it kind of happen a little bit. Maxi Hughes, like in the fourth or fifth round, looked like he might have been losing gas, but then he hurt Giovanni Strafon, and Strafon showed no ability to adjust. He showed no ability to cut off the ring, and he can't get out of the way of any punch, whether it's to the body, to the head, or anything like that. But I thought he'd be able to drag Maxi Hughes into a war, but Maxi Hughes boxed beautifully. He didn't get drugged into the war. Giovanni Strafon was trying to usher him in, like, come on, let's fight. Maxi Hughes ain't paying no attention. He boxed circles around him. Strafon was a step too slow all night. So we got that one wrong, bro. We got that one wrong. Usually... The pressure fighter, if they're good enough, they can force the boxer to fight if the boxer isn't agile enough. Now, I still don't believe Maxi Hughes is as agile as the top, top level fighters, but he's agile enough for somebody like Strafon, and that's why I was wrong. That's why I messed up his feet and his elusiveness. And it was the same elusive. That was the thing that I saw. If you go back and watch the fight, all Maxi Hughes was doing when Giovanni Strap in, Strafon came in, he ducked down. Pivot around to his right, or to his left it was, I believe. Yeah, no, it was his right. He dug down, pivoted around to his right. Every single time Strafon tried to get a hold of him. Strafon didn't try to didn't try to adjust with a half step left when he was coming in because he it's like he couldn't read what Maxi Hughes was going to do. But I saw it from a mile away. I thought maybe him in this corner would see it. They didn't, so as a result, he wasn't able to cut off the ring, and he got his ass whooped. So salute to Maxi Hughes. Proving your boy wrong, showing that even the best of the best, myself, bro, the best boxing analysis on this YouTube shit, sometimes I even miss them, bro. But we ain't gonna miss none today, though. We ain't gonna miss none today, and we would have had Laura right. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Um, The next one, um, Connor Ben. Connor Ben versus Adrian Granados. Connor Ben had a, had a pretty good performance. He had a pretty good performance. He smothered his shots a little bit. Um, I would have liked him to jab more to get inside. Go to the body more. Remember, I noticed that in some of his other fights, I, when Granados was showing that he was rolling with the punches well, and really, really, um, you could tell he had a good game plan of how to avoid Conor Ben's right hand up top because that's one of Conor Ben's 
Um, major weapons is a straight right hand and the overhand right. Granados was rolling with him. He was avoiding those punches. I like Conor being to go to the body more, bro, because when he went to the body, he had success, and then he was able to go up top after that. But overall, he put on a dominant performance. He won damn near every round, so you can't really – you can't knock him too much. He won damn near a round against, you know, Adrian Granados, a proven chisel veteran. That's a pretty good – that's a really good name on his resume. And it's a step in the right direction. Really interested to see what's next for him. Some people are talking about Adrian Broner. I don't think that's a good fight. It's a good name on Conor Ben's resume. But I'm going to tell y'all right now, Conor Ben washes AV right now, bro. And no disrespect to Adrian Broner, but just everything that he's dealing with right now, I believe he's in rehab or some shit. Um, he hasn't been dedicated to the sport in years. Um, even the best AB, even the best Adrian Broner. You know, with his, he's not tall for welterweight. He's not big for welterweight. Even the biggest, you know, the, the biggest and best Adrian Broner, the one that fought DeMarco, would struggle with Conor Ben. That one would be a 50-50 fight. This one here ain't no 50-50 fight. Conor Ben would do exactly what his nickname is. His nickname is the Destroyer. He would destroy Adrian Broner, in my opinion, bro. Now, um, the Katie Taylor versus Jennifer Hahn fight. I told y'all Jennifer Hahn had some good boxing skills. But I told y'all Katie Taylor's activity and intensity would be the difference in the fight. And that's exactly what it was. Jennifer Hahn had her moments where she was elusive, where um, she frustrated Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor wasn't able to be nearly as aggressive in the beginning of the fight as she would like to. But eventually she got her timing down. She understood what Jennifer Hahn was trying to do. And she landed more punches. Jennifer Hahn, with that elusivity that she had, she wasn't throwing enough punches. So she still wasn't able to get rounds off of Katie Taylor because Katie Taylor was throwing more and landing more early in the fight. Throwing more and landing more earlier in the fight. But as the fight went on, we get round six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Katie Taylor dominated the back half of that fight on her way to a unanimous decision. Jennifer Hahn was upset um, that the scorecards were so wide. You can see it when the scorecards were announced. She was yelling, wow. You know what I'm saying? But I would just say, you got to let your hands go. You got to let your hands go. She was too defensively oriented um, with Katie Taylor, who, yeah, I mean, Katie Taylor, she's a solid puncher. She got six knockouts and 18 fights. But it ain't like she's somebody that you can't trade with. And if this is the moment of your life, this is your chance to become undisputed in the lightweight division, if you um, if you Jennifer Hunt, she should have let her hands go more, bro, if she wanted to have a chance. But Katie Taylor clearly won that fight, clearly got that victory. Um, and so it is what it is with that. Now, let's get to the main event, bro, because I'm highly disappointed. I'm highly disappointed in the main event. Listen, say what you want. Say what you want, but Warrington was on his way to getting knocked out, in my opinion, bro. Now, they called it a technical draw because of an accidental headbutt that um, cut Laura's eye, made a nasty cut over his eye. I can't call it accidental, though, bro. La Warrington headbutted Laura, and he was lunging in like four, four or five times in the first two rounds. Now, my scorecard was one round to one. I clearly gave the, um, the first round to Warrington. I thought, he, I thought he fought well. I thought he landed more shots, but he did that in the first fight. He did that in the first fight. And I believe um, Warrington also won the second round in the first fight. What was different in this second fight, and as I told y'all, I believe Laura started getting to Warrington earlier. And I thought, if you go to look at the last minute, if y'all got the zone out, go look at the last minute and a half of the second round. Laura was catching Warrington flush, and he even caught him some in the first round. He was catching him flush with that overhand right, and he was working Warrington's body very well and punching Warrington all across the ring, bro. And Warrington was still shuffling. He wasn't jumping in and out. I don't think he got the legs he used to have, y'all. I don't think he can jump in and out for 12 rounds. And what what last night showed me, although it was a technical draw, Warrington can't stay away from Laura, bro. He can't stay away from Laura. And you give Laura five, six more months to train, you know, continue to grow into his body because he's only 23 years old. He was too strong for, for Warrington last night, in my opinion. That's why Warrington, if you notice, every time Laura would connect, every time Laura was in range, the reason those headbutts happened is because Warrington was jumping in head first to try to grab Laura to tie him up to get the reps to break them up so he can try to box more from a distance, bro. When they were exchanging, they both landed like Warrington was still exchanging with Laura, which we said he couldn't do. And he was getting rocked to the body. Laura's offensive attack was much more diversified, in my opinion. Warrington was landing some good shots up top. But you could see he couldn't really hurt Laura, bro. Laura was walking through it. But when Laura landed on Warrington, he had to take a couple of step backs to refocus and regain himself. And it, it just it's, it's nothing he can do to get away from Laura, in my opinion. So 
I'm mad that my parlay almost got messed up, but salute to my sports book for throwing that, that out because usually they wouldn't throw it out because they did have a, a play for me to pick a draw. But um, I guess since I played with them so much, they were like, man, we'll go ahead and give it to you. Keep your, the rest of your parlay going. Because I had like a six or seven, uh, no, a six-person parlay with all with the Ben fight, the um, the Taylor fight, the Laura fight, and then all the fights that's going down today. But luckily for me, they threw out the result of the Laura fight. They threw that out for you, boy. You know, so salute to them for doing that. And we still live, bro. We still got a chance to come up on a couple of coins, bro. So we'll see what happens in tonight's fights. I got Wilson Castillo. Y'all go check that prediction video out. I got Armando Resendez winning his fight. And then, of course, I got a ride with the young homie Jesus Ramos, bro. That dude there. Shoo. He a savage, bro. He a complete savage. But overall, Laura versus Warrington 3. Do I want to see it? Yeah. I want to see it because I'm interested to see the odds. And I think I can come up on it because I think they should be wide in favor of Laura. If you're really watching this boxing shit and you're really breaking it down and you're really looking at what was really going on inside the ring and you know they're going to be in a 12-rounder, bro, I honestly feel like it's only a matter of time for Josh Warrington when he's facing Laura, bro. I feel like they'll connect on each other early just like they were doing this fight and eventually Laura's body work, his power, and his strength – it's going to break Warrington down. It's only a matter of when. The only question in that fight, if they fight a third time, is when will Laura knock him out, bro? Will it be early? Will it be mid-rounds? Will it be late rounds? Will Warrington show so much heart that he just gets beat up for 12 rounds? I don't know, bro. I don't know, but I do know this. I'm very disappointed in last night. I wish Warrington would have just stopped jumping in with his head, stopped lunging in. It was clearly something that he was doing. I don't want to say he caused the headbutt on purpose but he was lunging in with his head on purpose like a damn missile or a torpedo or some shit trying to grab laura when they win exchanges because he ain't like what was coming back at him bro i'm just gonna keep it a buck with y'all man he ain't like what was coming back at him and when you a fighter bro you know you know what's up he knew what was up in that sec in that, in that um in that fight bro you can see it. he wasn't confident all that yelling and stuff before the fight at the way in the walkout, all of that stuff, his whole his whole demeanor was changed up, bro. He was tight. He was tentative, in my opinion. And the announcers were so biased, bro. They were so biased. You would have thought, if you go listen to that fight, bro, if you go listen to that fight and you turn off the, the, the video and all you get is the audio of that fight, like you listening to it on the radio or some shit, man, they'll have you believe Josh Warrington was beating the shit out of Laura, bro. They'll have you believe he was beating the shit out of Laura, bro. That Listen, man. You got to watch the fights for yourself is what I'm trying to say. Because there's a lot of biased commentary going on. It ain't just the UK commentary, bro. People do this shit over here in America all the time, bro. You listen to any broadcast these days here in America, over in the UK, whatever. You listen to any broadcast, you can almost tell who the promoters, who who the commentators, and who the uh, the official, you know, the unofficial scorer want to win just by looking at the scorecard and listening to the commentators. You listen to the commentators, bro, you can tell who they want to win, bro. Go listen to that Manny Pacquiao. Um, go listen to the Manny Pacquiao, Udinis Ugas commentary, bro. Go listen to it, man. Damian Lillard, the NBA superstar, had to call him out like, bro, why y'all trying to make people feel like Manny Pacquiao winning this fight? Like, it was funny, bro. It, it's just funny to listen to the Warrens and Laura um, commentary because they were so biased, bro, and they could sway – a casual fan's mind, casual fan be like, oh, they say he winning, he must be winning. Bro, Warrington was on his way to getting stopped, bro. He was on his way to getting stopped. He ain't got nothing for Laura. Laura is a real player in the featherweight division. I think Laura versus Navarrete, yes, please, 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 give me that, bro. Laura versus Navarrete, give me that. Laura versus Gary Russell Jr., Leo Santa Cruz, um, Kid Galahad, like, yes, bro. Yes, give me that. That's an, those are all very interesting fights. Those are all very interesting fights, but I think he's too much for Warrington. Warrington's past it, bro. Warrington got to take a third fight with him, though, if he wants any shot at fighting at a title again, bro. They, what they're not going to do, what I'm not going to allow them to do, and what I'm not going to go for, don't try to act like, oh, he was on his way to beating him. He was dominating. We're just going to move on to the next fight. There's no need to see that third fight. Nah, bro, miss me with that. Laura was putting in that work, fam. <laughs> he was putting in that work. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Comment down below. Overall, the car yesterday, man, it was okay. It would have been so much better, bro, 
it would have been so much better if the main event would have played out and we would have got to see if I was right or wrong, bro. I, I wish it, I wish it would have happened because I ain't got no problem being wrong. I just hate when fights end like that. Like, I want to see, the, I want to see the winner, bro. I don't want no draw in the second round. Like that shit, that shit was horrible. It was a letdown, and as a result, all of the stuff you saw before that is kind of a letdown now too. Cause see, you okay with a Conor Ben decision and the Katie Taylor decision and. All of that stuff, like all the fights going the distance, if you get to see a damn good main event with all those high stakes and, and intrigue and stuff that was on the line, it just was a letdown for me, man. But overall, we got more boxing today. Should be a fun day of boxing, so y'all be sure to tune in tonight. It's going down on Fox. It's the PBC card. It's happening at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So y'all check that out. Y'all know your boy going to be watching. But I appreciate y'all watching the video. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget about our live show every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And stay tuned to the community page for announcements for when we do little pop-up live streams, bro. Stay tuned on the community page for that. But I appreciate y'all watching the video. Enjoy the rest of y'all day. And with that, we out here. Peace, y'all.